That's why I'm introducing also MACD or MACD. Just quickly, what this indicator is about. It's about the difference between two moving averages, pretty short-term moving averages, 12 and 26. They are EMAs, exponential moving averages, and I've plotted them here on the chart. The red line is 12, the blue line is 26. Now, MACD line, the blue MACD line here. This is, oh, I'm getting a message that the sound might be cracking a bit. Um, maybe this helps. Okay, let's see. Let me know if it's better now. Very good, very good. Okay, now, the blue MACD line here, it moves higher when, in these two occasions, when A, the 12 EMA is below the 26 EMA, and the EMAs are converging, i.e., the difference between them is getting smaller. Then, point B, EMA, the 12 EMA, the faster EMA, can be, and uh, it is above the slower one from this point onwards, and if the EMAs diverge, in other words, if the difference between them is growing, then the MACD line will keep on moving higher. But as soon as this increase doesn't happen anymore, when the moving averages start to move closer to each other, the MACD line turns lower. So, if MACD line makes a lower high, like here, then it means that the distance between the moving averages here didn't increase as much as just before the previous price peak. Here's the peak one, and as you can see, price rocketed higher, and the difference between those two moving averages increased quickly, so MACD went up quickly. Then the next one, just before this high here, there wasn't much increase in the distance between them, just a little bit there, and that's why we got a high, lower high. Now, MACD divergence benefit over the RSI is basically the fact that MAC is not a bound indicator. It can create new highs and new lows without limitation. There's no limitation to how low or how high MACD line can go. So obviously that is a benefit of the RSI. But even then, even though MACD is not a bound indicator, it's still the observations based on it are still quite limited. It's a limited to short period of time because this faster moving average, 12 period moving average, is responsible for most of the movement in the indicator, in the MACD line. So what you're doing here is you only focus on MACD making lower or higher highs, you're only focusing on previous 12 bars here and previous 12 bars here, and maybe something in between, but that is a too narrow view on the market. We need, there are thousands of data points that we ignore if we do this. Obviously, I'm not saying we need to take all that in, but I'm saying that we need to have a wider understanding. So we need some other tools as well. So before we go and take a look at other ways to study momentum, I'll grab something to drink here very quickly. I'll be back with you. Just a moment, please. OK, here we go. Ball in Japan. 
Now, on this picture, you, you can see that the MACD is making lower lows, while price keeps on moving higher. Now, my question to you is, what's the difference in these numbered points? If you look at the price action there, and if you look at the Bollinger Bands, what is the major difference between points one, two, three, and four? What's the difference? If you can spot the difference, very good, because then that tells me that you are very observant. That tells me you can you can get you can sort of grasp things very quickly. Okay, bands getting smaller. Yes, they are getting closer to each other. That's a good observation, but I'm actually focusing on something else. Something that tells you about momentum. Remember what I told you about me running up those stairs on nine, you know, in this nine story, 11 story building? Okay. First of all, there's a lot of momentum. Yes, size of bull candles is a good answer, but I'm focusing on the Bollinger Bands and how much price action is taking place outside the Bollinger Bands. Because when the momentum is strong, when the momentum is strong, price is more likely to stay outside the upper Bollinger Bands, right? three candles almost outside the band. Then we have one close and one candle outside the band. Then we have just one close and a couple of high values. And then on fourth point, we have only the spikes outside the upper Bollinger Band. Okay, that tells you that the momentum is slowing down. It basically confirms the message that we get from the MACD. But as long as we see this, as long as we see a lot of momentum from these kind of swing points here, it's not likely that we have a turnaround point. And on, basis, on this information only, we can't really say that now price is turning. But the fading momentum is highlighted. So it supports the analysis. It gives you a wider understanding of what's going on. Now, this what happens here. It usually happens when market approaches certain historical price levels. 